In this Python example program, we're going to use the scenario of calling bingo to demonstrate the if, elif, else structure as well as using a dictionary. This bingo Python program can be found at the URL seen at the top. On the left, we see the program loaded up into Visual Studio Code. And on the right, we see two of the scenarios of running the program. The program picks a random number between 1 and 12, inclusive, and then gives out the bingo call that corresponds to that number. It does that in two different ways, and then we have run it twice. The person running a bingo game is going to pull a random number, often a ball out of a cage or something like that. We're going to have the computer do it by drawing a pseudo random number based on an algorithm. Then instead of calling out the number, the, the bingo caller will call out some phrase based on that number. So we are going to have our computer pick a random number between 1 and 12. Not that bingo sticks to 12, but we're being lazy here. And then we're going to use two different scenarios to go from the number to the phrase that is called. So we're going to start off. We need this random number, so we're going to bring in the random class that's already been written for us, but it's not part of what standardly comes down as pot in Python, so then we need to import it. And then we're going to use it in line 13 down there to get a random number. So there is this rand in method belonging to the random class, and it has two arguments, 1 and 12, and this is the lowest number and the highest number uh, integer value that we are going to pull. So we are going to pull some number between 1 and 12, and it can be 1 and it can be 12. In our first approach to bingo calling, we're going to use the if, l, if, else structure. So we have a set of mutually exclusive cases. So we've drawn a random number, and these are mutually exclusive. So you, it's either 4 or it's not 4, it's 6 or it's not 6, etc. And so we're going to use this if, l, if, else structure. So we're going to begin to ask a series of true, false questions. And so we start in line 16. If the number drawn is a 1, then we're going to print the phrase Kelly's I. Otherwise, we're going to ask a subsequent question. If the draw is equal to number 2, then we're going to print one little duck. Um, if that is false, then we're going to ask another question. If the draw is equal to three, then we're going to print a cup of tea, and so on. So we go through all of the possibilities. Now, on line 38, I have an L if for the last question. And strictly speaking, this question, we don't have to ask a question in 38. So that L if could just be an else. Our second approach to bingo calling is going to be a dictionary approach. So we're going to have a set of what are called key value pairs. Typically, one uses the key to look up the value. So in this case, in our bingo case, the keys will be numbers. The, the dictionary is not limited to the keys being numbers. It just That just happens to be the situation in this case. So we're going to use the key, which is a number, then to look up the corresponding phrase. So if I or had an 8 and I was going to use the 8 as a key and look that up, then I would come up with garden gate. The notation that we just saw for dictionary is rather like that of JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, so obviously it has its origin in JavaScript, but it has it's used more universally than that. The dictionary is surrounded by curly brackets, then it has key value pair. So the key is separated from the value using a colon, so we know which is the key and which is the value. And then the pairs, the key value pairs, are separated from one another by a comma. So we have that closing curly bracket that you see in line 57. That's the close of the dictionary. And we see in line 56 our last key value pair, the val value is one dozen, the key is 12. So if you were to roll a 12, you would get the value of one dozen. In 59, we are once again using 
our random class to get a random number between 1 and 12 inclusive. In 61, we are showing that in the terminal with number we drew. And then in 62, we are getting the corresponding phrase. So we are using our dictionary, which we called lingo. We are using the get method of the dictionary. And then the argument of the get method is the key. So we are using this random number from 59 as the key. So whatever number we happen to draw, then we are going to get the corresponding phrase in our dictionary. Other languages, usually older languages, support a control structure known as a switch. In Visual Basic, this might be called a select case statement. And they use this to handle this mutually exclusive cases scenarios that we've been dealing with here. Python does not have a switch statement. It has a clean if, elif, else structure that you can use, and it has a nice dictionary structure for you to use. And when you can use the dictionary approach, that would be more efficient than the if, elif, else approach.